All right, here we go. Um, you guys asked me if I would make a couple videos for um, some of the AP practice problems that we did. Uh, the first one you asked for was the um, 2016 number two, so let's just jump right in. Um, we have this picture here where we have a, mass, a block of mass 2M connected to a spring right here. Then we have a mass of a block of mass 3M. It's out here at the left. It's moving to the uh, out here to the right, moving to the left at a speed of v zero. One of the things that tells you here that's important is that this spring has this spring equation. So it's negative b x cubed. Now that's a far cry from um, f as a function of x is equal to negative k x, which would be Hooke's law. So we see this is a non-ideal spring. Um, that's going to be important for us later. But the first thing it says is, um, on the dots, which represent the blocks, um, draw and label force diagrams. Uh, no problem. So this is before they collide. So while this one is moving this direction, what are the forces? Well, obviously this one this is the 2m block. So it has 2mg, the earth is pulling it down. This one is then... 3mg. Now when you look at the key, they don't um, care about the links. I know in class we cared about them a lot, but here they don't care that much. What other forces are on them? Well, there's got to be some sort of uh, normal force from the table, and the same thing over here. Normal force from the table. And I think that's it. I think that's the only forces that we have here. I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to Catch kids that think that because this one is moving left, there must be a force left, but I think those are the only things. Um, and I'm going to check the answer key. And according to the answer key, um, this was two points. This was two points here. And it says you get one point for correctly drawing and labeling the vectors on this one. So plus one for this one and plus one for this one. And then if there were any extraneous vectors, you lost points on there. Let's look at B. Uh, B says, derive an expression for the speed of the blocks immediately after the collision. Well, this is one of the things about this. When you see a collision problem, I think right away this is an indication that this is a conservation of momentum type problem. So let's do that then. What do we know about the conservation of momentum? Well, the main thing we know is that the initial momentum has to be equal to the final momentum. I think that that's it. So what do we have before the collision? Well, before the collision, we have a block of mass 3m. They use a capital M here. I used a lowercase m here, but they use a, a capital M here. 3m moving at speed v0. Now one thing that's important about this is that we see it's moving to the left, so we need an indication here that the initial momentum is all negative. That's going to be important. What do we have the after? Well now we have a total of 2m plus 3m and moving at this new speed which we'll call v and this is actually what we're looking for. So this seems like it's a pretty straightforward problem because um, we're allowed to answer these questions in terms of um, m and v0. So let's keep going on this bad boy. Um, when I look at this, I have still I have 3m v0 on this side. 2m plus 3m is 5m on this side times the v. If I go to solve for v, it's equal to negative, we're going to uh, have the m's magically disappear, so we have negative 3v0 over 5. So that is the velocity, but the question says, what is the speed? And so we know speed is the absolute value of the velocity, so speed is equal to 3v0 over 5. Pretty straightforward. Let's keep going. Let's look at C. C says derive an expression for the kinetic energy of the two block system immediately after the collision. No problem. Uh, 
So if I'm going to find the kinetic energy, I know kinetic energy as a concept is equal to one half mv squared. And so if I take my speed from here, and I know that it's a two block system, so I have five m's here, I can say that my kinetic energy is equal to one half five m. Now I need my speed here, right? So I'm going to plug it in and it's 3v0 all over 5 and that's squared. So I'll write this out so I don't lose track of what I'm doing. So this is going to be um, 9v0 squared all over 25. So in the top I have 5 times 9 in the bottom I have 2 times 25. So this looks like it's um, 45 over 50. So 45 over 50 is 9v0 squared all over 10. Uh, I forgot to do the points on this last one. Hold on. The points on this last one um, if you correctly use this and substitute it in, and then one point for the answer, and this is just a one, uh, this is just a one pointer here. Now, if you had the wrong speed here and you inputted the wrong speed, but you got the answer consistent, you still got the one point there. Let's look at D. D says derive an expression for the maximum distance that the spring is compressed. So this is, I think, this is the, the hard part of this. Uh, and it turns out this is difficult enough, okay? It turns out this is difficult enough, but not outside of the realm of things that you can do. So what we start with is we start with the idea that we know that this hits, it has a new speed, it has some kinetic energy, and then they're going to slow to a stop. Well, if they slow to a stop, we know that the energy had to go somewhere. And one of the things we know is that the change in the kinetic energy is equal to the work that's done. So if we start with that as an idea, and then we know a couple other things. First of all, this is change in kinetic energy, so it's final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. That'll be important in a second. But what else do we know about work? Work done by a spring is the antiderivative of the f dx function. That's part of our understanding of work as a concept. So if the change kinetic energy is the work and the work is the antiderivative of the f dx, well, we can actually set those two things equal to each other. So the change in kinetic energy, the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy, is equal to the antiderivative of the f dx function. Well, the final kinetic energy is zero. The initial kinetic energy is right here. So we have negative initial kinetic energy is equal to the antiderivative of this force function. But what is the function? Well, it's right here. It's negative bx cubed dx. So negative initial kinetic energy is equal to um, the antiderivative of this. So we get to apply the antiderivative algorithm here. So once we apply the antiderivative algorithm, we can get a new thing. But we know that this has to go, it, it's bounded. So it's going from initial position to the final position. So like x1 to x2. And we'll see what those are here in a second. It's a little easier to do it this way. But when I take the antiderivative, I have negative bx to the fourth all over 4, and we're trying to find out the distance that it compresses d. So basically it gets compressed from 0 to d. And now when I plug this up in here, I'm going to get rid of the negatives. So what is my initial kinetic energy? Well, it's 9v0 squared all over 10 is equal to, since this is 0, when I plug this in, this goes away. So I just end up with bd to the fourth all over 4. And now I want to solve for d. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 4 and simplify a little bit and I end up with 
d is equal to the fourth root, because I got to solve for d, of 18 fifths. Oh, I lost a, I lost an m in here. I lost an m in here too. Yikes. I can't lose these M's, people. There. 18 M V0 squared all over 5 B. So this was actually the hardest part of this. Um, and one thing you realize is that the work is the antiderivative of the force function, and here's the force function, so you're going to have to do this. Now, this was four points, not trivial, okay? Uh, not trivial, um, but for the correct expression of the conservation of energy. So if you had that this, the change kinetic energy is equal to the work, that's a point. For attempting to um, take the antiderivative here, that's a point. All right, for using the correct limits from 0 to d, in fact, you could have just plugged in d here. That would have been fine also. And then if you got the correct answer, that's another point. Okay, let's go on here. Let's look at uh, EI. Let me get my little eraser out. Hold on. Let's look at EI. So here's EI. It says, in which direction is the net force, if any, on the block of M2, 2M, when the spring is at maximum compression? Well, when the spring is at maximum compression, if you look at the force diagram, we have the earth pulling it down, we have the normal force pushing it up, and if it's at a maximum compression, then this is the force by the spring. And when you look at this, what we're going to notice is that the net unbalanced force is to the right, therefore the acceleration is also to the right. So this would be, it says, in what direction is it? The acceleration is to the right, and the proper justification is because the net force is also to the right. Um, you can think about it another way, too. At maximum compression, it's stopped, but it's actually stopped but speeding up to the right, and because it's stopped and speeding up to the right, the acceleration must be to the right. EII says, um, which of the following describes the magnitude of the net force on each of the two blocks when the spring is at maximum compression? Well, the thing I think that is important is here is that because the two blocks are touching, because they're touching, block two is pushing on block three. But what that means to me is that they have the same acceleration. The acceleration of the two block is equal to the acceleration of the three block. However, because the accelerations are the same, but their masses are different, that's going to tell me that the forces have to be different. So I think that the force, the net force on three has to be greater than the net force on two. And the reasoning is that is because this has a bigger mass. Bigger mass means more inertia, means more resistance to change. So in order for them to have the same acceleration, you would need more force. It works like this. They have the same acceleration, which is force over mass. Small force, small mass. Over here, bigger force because bigger mass. And then F says... Oh, so we didn't do F. F is about simple harmonic motion, and we didn't cover that. So um, I think that's it. And let me check the key on this one. It says here for that um, EI was two points. One point for selecting um, the correct direction. Um, one point for selecting the correct direction, which was to the right. 
and then 1.4 correct justification, and I am sure it's the same thing down here. Um, for an indication, the blocks will have the same acceleration, and so if you said you know this because the blocks have the same acceleration, and you have the same the right statement, so two more points. So for this one, a total of 13 points, and hopefully that clears up for you.